Ooh, that's a hot mug guy. Hey guys, I'm in the middle of editing uh, one of my last video uh, wedding gigs of the year. And I thought I would just take this little break to talk about the new Thor Love and Thunder film. Now, I'll admit I wasn't entirely stoked going into this. I was cool to see Taika Waititi working with Chris Hemsworth again. I was curious to see how they would handle the Lady Thor thing. And I, I can say I have some disappointment with it, but it's nothing to do with what some people seem to be getting uh, burnt out about, like, like there's any kind of wokeness in it or the Lady Thor thing. No, guys, it's the same as the new James Bond movie. It, there is a Lady Thor there, but you still have and will still have Thor being Chris Hemsworth. It's actually, it's the fact that there's so much of this film that is clearly on the cutting room floor and the effects of making a movie in an insanely quick amount of time for no real reason considering this film has no branching after effect onto the mcu as a whole and the one person who truly does suffer from this the most is christian bale gore the butcher is butchered in terms of the storytelling there are some comments i've been seeing of people saying that he's the best one of the best villains in a long while for the MCU, and that's kind of hard to not disagree with, considering you still have Thanos, and everything that's been after Thanos has been subpar, if not quite crappy, to be honest. And he has the potential. I feel that he suffers from the same things that Michael Keaton's villain in Batman, or sorry, <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming did, which was his development stopped after the first 10 minutes. And that's exactly what happens with Christian Bale's character. His character does not develop past his initially opener. His opening scene is all the development you get. You never see him kill a god. That was cut from the film. You never see him have a lot of very in-depth scenes that Bale's even actually kind of pissed about that were cut from the film. No, instead you get this very, very, very formulaic, yet at the same time overstaying its welcome kind of film. Supposedly this movie was something on like four hours long or something, which I'll admit if it was, I would have walked out because I would have just been so bored. But even though it is one of the shortest films in the MCU, it is one of the longest. It just overstays its welcome. There's a lot of scenes that just kind of have this cringy humor. And it's not cringy because they're bad jokes. It's just like, Ugh, oh, this. why is this scene still going on? And a lot of those are with Chris Hemsworth. And just him in general. Not just with Jane, but with other characters in the movie. He just doesn't have the same beats, the same humor. And I feel it's because this is just a ran, a very simplistic, very by the number story, where Thor Ragnarok had a lot of loss in it, and it had some humor and some kind of just random shit happening in it. This one follows everything to a T, like everything from Gore's plan of what to do with Thor to the guys taking on gore the first time and everything obviously not going as planned to his relationship with jane which i did enjoy actually having natalie portman back i thought that her inclusion was the in the film was welcome uh but it's like taking a discarded character and then trying to give them something again and sometimes that can work sometimes it can't heck even Skosgard doesn't even actually make an appearance in this movie. He's just he just phoned his thing in and like on a phone call, literally in the movie. And I bet he did that when he did with the recording too. So I don't know, and I feel it definitely was another like one other big factor out of all of this is that how quickly this movie was put together. Taika wrote it and put it together in such an insanely quick amount of time. There's no way this could have been good in loss of by divine miracle you would have needed a lot more passes over the script and it's kind of interesting considering we all love that taika was associated with the mcu we loved his work with thor ragnarok and then i feel that love and thunder is kind of the seconds the cold seconds you get from the fridge like they're not heated up anymore this is leftovers like it's okay you you'll have them because you need to eat something but really it's not nowhere near on the same level as it was before 
And one final factor I do have with this movie is that it is lacking the Loki. The Loki factor of these movies has been always a very welcome and grateful and obviously a well-pronounced part of these series. But without him at all, it shows. It shows that Thor really needs that back and forth distrustful banter. It needs that kind of, do I trust my brother, but he's so cunning do I love my brother, but he's betrayed me so many times. There's a lot of those elements that are completely absent because you don't have a character like that to progress with. They, they try to have that a little bit with Jane in different ways. They try to have that with Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie character, but that doesn't work really either. And the bit with going to the God world and meeting Zeus was, it's a joke, it's like a joke in the whole sense of the word of them going there and doing everything in the first place. And I was quite let down that the thing that made me laugh the most was a animated uh, dumpling making a meow noise. That was the part that made me laugh the most. Now, admittedly, I just rambled on for six minutes about what I didn't like. What did I like? I thought the VFX was pretty decent. I would hope so because there's like 60 different fucking VFX studios that are associated with this movie because every time Kevin Feige goes up on the stage to announce a bunch of movies, a bunch of uh, underpaid and overworked CGI artists cry. I thought that some of the humor was good. I, the parts that weren't making me going, mm, I did enjoy. There were... Um, actually another good element with Thor is his relationship with Jane. I thought that was going to be probably one of the weakest parts, but actually it was their relationship and their conversations with each other about their relationship were good for the most part. And I liked Bale, but really, I, I hate to say this, but fucking Thor the Dark World has more importance than this movie does. Does that mean it's better than this movie? Good God, no. I'd still watch Love and Thunder, but there's nothing that happens in this movie. There isn't even, like, a tease that's actually worth anything unless it is directly associated with the next Thor movie, which who gives a shit? I don't know. I, I just... I was hoping for a lot more. Now, if you're going into this kind of just as a generic enjoyable movie you're gonna get that i guess as a popcorn flick turning off your brain enjoyment kind of film but it is a very strange discrepancy between what we got from taika and chris hemsworth and this movie like i don't even know why chris got so huge it doesn't do anything with it there's this really weird awkward fight scene in the town of asgard that Again, I feel like this was put together really last minute. I think that this movie also had the issue of dealing with COVID, and this definitely has it wears its effects on its sleeve. But overall, I was not impressed with Thor Dark World. I went in with low expectations, and I was somehow bored and wanting to leave quite quickly by the hour and 48 minute mark. I stayed just so, like, I was like, please have something about this movie be worth it. And I will say I did like the post post credit scene. It's very final. It's very final. It's very definitive. And that's it. That's really it, guys. Otherwise, I'm going to give Thor Love and Thunder a 2 out of 7. This is one of the lowest I've ever rated personally a Thor movie. It's not worse than Thor the Dark World, but by god is it close? that's all for me let me know what you guys thought about this movie in the comments below did you like it did you not like it are you kind of also wishing you'd seen more of gore the butcher because i feel like that's one of the big key elements that's missing from this movie that could have it could have helped i feel having a lot more of that villain element that more banter back and forth and just a general villain presence but anyways that guys that's all for me uh I, i'm gonna go back to editing and then i'm gonna go to bed See you guys next time.